We have the privilege this morning to ordain one of our own to the deacon ministry. Ordination means to be set apart, and uh, we have a great group of deacons. Um, they are such a wonderful support and extension of my ministry, and I thank God for them every day. Neil, will you come up? Uh, several of the guys are going to participate this morning, but we want to start by you hearing from Neil Yetz, hearing his testimony, and uh, then we'll go on. Neil, let's welcome Neil this morning. As I look across this uh, audience, I see people from the, that I've met over the years since I, uh, since Victoria and I uh, joined Foxworthy in 2005, and uh, and I see people from different ministries and different uh, areas where we've served, such as. Uh, <coughs> such as the Heritage Junction and in Celebrate Recovery and uh, just all different kinds of ministries that, 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 uh, that we've been serving. Um, <clears throat> give you a little background about me. Um, I was born and raised here in San Jose. Um, so I've seen a lot of changes over the years. <laughs> uh, I was raised in the Catholic Church originally and uh, fell away from the church. Uh, when I was a teenager, uh, to make a long story short, I didn't come back to the church until 2004 when I was, uh, uh, I had lost my job for, for, for 18 months and I was forced to, uh, the Victoria and I were forced to move to uh, Vancouver, Washington to find work. Uh, we found work there for, uh, uh, after being there about six months, but the interesting thing about it is when we first went up there, <clears throat> we looked all over for, for a place to, to, to live. And, and we couldn't find anybody that would rent to us and let us have our dogs and you know all these different kinds of things. But uh, this one place was just right around the corner from this little Baptist church. And so uh, we rented there and the first week we went there and, um, and I was, feeling really bad because I had already been out of work for a year so I, I was feeling really concerned and worried about my future and my, the future of my family obviously so anyway <clears throat> I went into the church and uh, and after the church the pastor the pastor took me aside uh, to the fellowship hall and I told him what was going on and how I just didn't know what was going to happen I was in tears and he said to me, he said, take my hand and minister with me, and we'll let God worry about the rest. Uh, two months later, my entire family was baptized, and uh, I've been a faithful believer ever since. Amen. Amen. I would like to personally thank each and every one of you for trusting in me and giving me this, this privilege of, of serving in the deacon ministry. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. First Timothy chapter 3. Verses 8 to 13 say, Deacons, likewise, must be men of dignity, not double-tongued or addicted to much wine or fond of sordid gain, but holding to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. These men must also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons if they are beyond reproach. Women must likewise be dignified, not malicious gossips, but temperate, faithful in all things. Deacons must be husbands of only one wife and good managers of their children and their own households. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a high standing and great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. How does our church select deacons? Well, once a year, usually starting in September, we request names from you, our membership, uh, we request you to submit up to three names each uh, for consideration as deacons. This is in accordance with Acts uh, 6, 
verse 3 where the apostles solicit, requested the church to support to solicit names to submit names for helping serve and multiply their ministry once at Foxworthy once the names are received the pastor and the current deacons meet to consider each name in accordance with the verses we just read if we believe the Lord is would have us continue with their name and nomination uh, we contact that person and ask them if they'd be willing to serve uh, serve at the church as deacons if they say yes and they've been ordained as deacons before we simply bring their name to you uh, to the church for voting to reactivate the service as a deacon if they've not served before as deacons then we test them in accordance with the verse that we just read now this testing usually means well, what does we have them submit a written interview, a written questionnaire, and then we meet with them personally to just share the, hear their personal testimony and just for things that come up. Um, after the end, after this time, if we and they both consider that they're willing to proceed, that we both feel God is leading in this consideration as deacons, uh, we bring them to the church for a vote as a deacon trainee. And for the next year, we provide both formal educational training as deacons, as well as real life experiences, some going out hospital visits or uh, helping associate with Lord's Supper, or just being available on call. Deacons are called to serve, so things that come up. And again, after this point, if both they and we believe they're willing, or that God is leading in their service as deacons, then we bring their name to the church for vote as a deacon, and then subsequent ordination. And that's the step where we're at this morning with Neil. So in our church, deacons, once they serve, they serve for three years, which can be automatically, if you want to say, re-upped for, for a total of six years. After that six years, they have to take, we require a one-year rotate off, rotation off um, from serving, although any of the deacons, you never really rotate off from serving the Lord through his church. So it's a, they rotate off from serving as an active deacon. Uh, at the end of that year off, to be, re to be renominated again or reactivated as a deacon, again, they would, their name must be brought again through the normal process. So that's how our church calls our deacons to serve. Thank you. Thank you. We currently have seven active deacons, and uh, Neil will make number eight uh, for this coming year. Well, Neil, will you please stand? I want to ask you some questions. Uh, please respond with, I will. Neil, will you promise that to the best of your ability, you will live your life in accordance with the standards enumerated in 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 13? I will. Will you strive to manage your home and to lead your family as the spiritual head God has called you to be? Will you be on the ready to minister to the physical and spiritual needs of the Foxworthy Faith family? I will. Will you present yourself to comfort and to counsel those in need? I will. Will you seek to maintain harmony in the body and to be on the lookout for areas of conflict? I will. Will you support the pastors and assist them as you are called upon? I will. Will you strive to be an example both in personal integrity and in Christian witness to this congregation and to the world. I will. All right, thank you. You and Victoria can come be seated. And now to you, the church, you've selected Neil to be one of your deacons. He's been examined and approved by our active deacons, and so I want to ask you some questions, and please answer with, we will. Will you pray for Neil and Victoria, asking God to protect them and to care for them, both physically and spiritually? Yes. I like that. <laughs> Good. Will you seek out Neil for counsel when the need arises and prayerfully consider his input and suggestions? Yes. Will you encourage Neil knowing that the ministry to which he is called will bring trying times and tough situations? Yes. Will you direct others in the body to Neil in times of conflict or trouble? Yes. Amen. One of the special parts of this uh, ordination or the ceremony of ordination is the laying on of hands. And uh, it says, 
we are praying for you. We're praying God's blessing on you and that the Holy Spirit will fill you, guide you, lead you, and empower you. And so I would ask uh, our deacons first, if they'll come up and, and uh, lay hands on Neil and Victoria and just say, uh, some of you say a brief prayer for them. And then any others from, a, from the congregation that would desire to, to come up and pray over them, uh, would you come also now and you can join this larger circle. We, several of you pray and then at the close of that, I'm going to ask our deacon chairman, uh, Brother Ricardo Polanco, to come up here and to say a final prayer, trusting them to God. All right? So some of you pray, please. And we'll do some singing while you're praying. highest expectation. We know that you are able to do much more abundantly beyond all that we ask or we think. According to your power that works within us. Mm -hmm. And today we thank you for all those around you, his wife, his friends, mm -hmm. his loved ones, his mentors, godly men and women who has built into the life of Neil and Victoria, preparing them for the occasion to which they are called today. And we pray that you would keep them, Lord, each one clean from the midst of corrupt generation. Yes. May they shine their light over a darkened world. We pray that God will use them for his greatest glory. Your word tells us that when you call us to do anything, you will always provide the resources needed. And may they come from the rich well of grace. We are excited to think how desperately they are needed in the body. Faithfully in love with service in the will of God, keeping them on their knees, dear Lord, learning the power of prayer, and always asking the question, is it really worth doing anything if I can do it without prayer? Give them the passion of our, of our Savior, who at the end of his life commanded his disciples, go therefore and make disciples. We see that in Matthew 28, 19. Father, as good shepherd, go before Neil, lead him in the past to do your will and to do it courageously. Keep him away from sin. Keep him humble. Prevent him from believing his own success. Mm -hmm. For all the blessings come from you. Father, I ask all this, believing in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Neil and Victoria, if you'll join me on stage. Ricardo, go ahead and stay up here, brother. First of all, we want to uh, present you with some flowers. We don't do this near and often enough. All of our deacons' wives certainly deserve some regular uh, thanks because there will be a sacrifice uh, for Neil's ministry, and it's your ministry too. There will be times when Neil will say, I need you to talk to Victoria. And uh, so we want to say thank you, and we'll be praying for you as a partner in ministry. And then, Neil, we have this... Uh, Carter, come on up. You will take a picture of this. A certificate of ordination that says, Neil Yetz, 
having been chosen as one of good report, full of the spirit and of wisdom, capable of using the office well, was solemnly and publicly set apart and ordained to the work of the deacon ministry by authority and order of Foxworthy Baptist Church of San Jose on the 27th day of October, 2013, signed by me and Pastor Chris and Ricardo Polanco, our deacon chairman. So I want to God bless you. Let's take a picture. Let's take Thank you.